Hello everyone, on this video we are going to have a look on where we use the most electricity at home and what we can do to decrease the consumption and save money on our electricity bills. We are confident that the tips that we are going to share will prove to be very useful to you, so stay with us until the end of the video to get the most benefit from it. Before we start, a reminder that you have to switch on the captions if you would like to have the subtitles in English or other languages. Probably you have already noticed that I have a strong Spanish accent, but I hope that you can understand me even without the subtitles. We are going to focus on the areas where we are using the most electricity at home. Also, we are going to show you how you can reduce your electricity consumption and save money on your electricity bill. The pie chart that we are showing on screen may not fully apply to your personal situation at home, but it should give you an idea on where, for the average household, the most electricity it is being used. As you can see, 47% of the electricity it is used to cool and heat up our houses. So finding out how to save on cooling and heating should be a priority. This is followed by a 14% of the electricity that is used to heat up water, a 13% of the electricity it is used by our washing machine and dryers, a 12% of the electricity it is used to illuminate our houses, and then we have a 4% of the electricity used to power on our fridge and another 4% to power on our ovens. Finally, we have 5% of the electricity used to power on other appliances and devices. It is clear that we all need to use electricity at home, but here the key it is to be as efficient as possible and decrease or eliminate any energy from being wasted. For that, on this video we are going to give you some tips on how you can save electricity at home. First, we are going to have a look to what consumes the most electricity at home, which are the house cooling and heating. And probably the most efficient way to save money on heating and cooling it is to have a well insulated house. As an example, we are going to show you some pictures that we have taken using a thermal camera and on those pictures you should be able to see the difference between having good or bad insulation at home. Have a look to this radiator and specifically to the pipe that is supplying hot water to it. You will notice that the pipe it is not insulated at all, but for a small part where we have added some pipe insulation to show you the difference between having insulation or no insulation at all. Notice that we have highlighted in green the part to which we have added the insulation. Where we have added the insulation, the temperature it is 34 degrees Celsius, while on the rest of the pipe the temperature it is 52 degrees Celsius. This means that a considerable amount of heat it is being wasted by the non-insulated pipes. We consider it as a wasted heat because part of that heat it is directly transferred from the pipes to the walls and then to the outside. The heat transferred to the walls, it is not heating up the room. Or, even if there is a room where there is no need of using the radiator, for example because the room it is not in use, setting the radiator to zero or to a lower setting will not have much benefit because the non-insulated pipes will keep heating up the room. In contrast, have a look to some well-insulated hot water pipes. We live on a building of recent construction where all the pipes are well insulated and this is preventing any unnecessary heat loss. This may not be your case if you are living on an old house, so you may want to have a look on how well insulated your hot water pipes are. And also, have a look to your boiler's insulation. Before moving forward, a little reminder that if you find this video useful, be kind and press the like button. We dedicate a lot of effort to make these videos and a like from you will give us the support that we need to keep producing more useful content. Also, maybe you will consider to subscribe to our channel so you can receive notifications every time that we upload new content. Moving forward, having to heat up water accounts for the second biggest electricity consumption at home. So a good way to decrease our electricity consumption it is to decrease the amount of hot water that we use at home. For that, we are going to show you two ways that you can use to decrease the amount of hot water that you use on your bathroom. On our bathroom, we have installed a water saving tap aerator that has decreased our tap water consumption from 10 liters per minute to 3.8 liters per minute. A water saving tap aerator it is rather cheap and easy to install, so nearly anyone should be able to benefit from this method to save water. If you are interested, we have made a video showing how we have installed a water saving tap aerator. For more details, have a look to the link that we have left on the video description. 
another very good method to save hot water it is to install a flow reduction valve to our showers. We have tried with both using an echo shower head and a flow reduction valve. With the echo shower head we didn't have any good results because the amount of water saved was very little, but we are rather happy with the flow reduction valve. With this valve we can easily adjust the water flow to individual preferences. This valve has proven especially useful when our small children want to play a bit while having a shower because we can just decrease the water flow and let them enjoy without wasting too much hot water. As you can see, this is another good method to save both water and the electricity used to heat up the water. If you would like to learn how to install a flow reduction valve to your shower, we have left a useful link on the video description. The washing machines and tumble dryers account for the third largest electricity consumption at home. It is possible to reduce the tumble dryer electricity consumption by up to 20% by using tumble dryer bolts. This is because the tumble dryer bolts prevent the clothes and fabrics from sticking together and facilitate the warm air circulation between the clothes. This way, the clothes dry quicker and the tumble dryer uses less electricity to complete a cycle. If you would like to know more about the tumble dryer bolts, we have left a link on the video description to a post where we have written about this topic. Now we are jumping to have a look on how much electricity we use to illuminate our houses. Illumination accounts for a 12% of the total electricity used at home. What we are going to show you it is the difference between using energy efficient LED light bulbs or the much less efficient incandescent light bulbs. And you will be able to see how much more electricity can be saved by using LED light bulbs. We start with the LED light bulbs. This LED light bulb consumes 12 watts, so in order to calculate the cost, first we need to transform the watts into kilowatts. 12 watts it is the equivalent to 0.012 kilowatts, and this bulb it is using 0.012 kilowatts per hour. For this example, we are assuming that this bulb stays switched on for 6 hours every day. So if we multiply the 0.012 kilowatts per hour, by the 6 hours, we get to know that this LED light bulb will be consuming 0.072 kilowatt hours per day. If we multiply this value for the number of days that we stay at home along the year, and here we are assuming 320 days per year, we get to know that this bulb will be consuming 23.04 kilowatt hours per year. We have to multiply this value for what we are paying to our electricity company for every kilowatt hour that we are consuming. In our case, we are paying 0 0.2173 euro per kilowatt hour. So this means that we will be paying 5 euro on electricity to power up this LED light bulb. Now we repeat the same calculations, but this time we start the calculations with 100 watts, which it is the incandescent bulb equivalent to a 12 watts LED bulb. For the same conditions of 6 hours per day and 320 days per year, we have a total cost of 41.72 euro per year. This has been only an example, and probably the most extreme one, but we have used it to show you the importance of using energy efficient bulbs. If you are not using energy efficient bulbs at home, and if you are using a lot of bulbs for a considerable amount of time, you should run some calculations to find out how much money you could save on electricity by swapping to them. We have left a link on the video description to an online calculator that you can use to easily make the calculations by yourself. Now we are going to have a look to position number 5 on our list, which it is the fridge. The fridge accounts for a 4% of the electricity used at home. Here we are not going to give you tips on how to use your fridge efficiently. Instead, in our opinion, to save electricity you should consider to buy an energy efficient appliance next time that you need to change your fridge. Nowadays, all the appliances are labeled with energy efficient labels which display the yearly electricity consumption. This makes quite easy to calculate the approximate electricity cost of running your fridge for the whole year. With the oven, you could follow the same advice we have provided for the fridge, but we want also to encourage you to measure the electricity consumption and finding out the most efficient setup to run your oven. On the internet you can find much advice like uh, cook multiple dishes at the same time, or try ceramic uh, or glass pans. Uh, use the self-cleaning feature once the oven is already hot after cooking a meal. Do not open the oven while it is working. But if you really want to know how much electricity your oven is using and which tip or advice it is really going to save you money, you need to check the electricity consumption so you get to know what advice it is useful or not. 
If you want to know more about what a plug-in power meter is and how you can use it to measure the electricity consumption and the electricity cost, we have left a link on the video description to a post where we show you how to use a plug-in power meter. And we are going to show you now an example that has worked very well for us. We have made some measurements to the amount of electricity that our dishwasher is using based on the different cycle options we have. And we came to realize that the cycle that we were using the most, the auto cycle, was using more energy than the eco cycle, which we were not nearly using at all. And since we found out this, we are not always using the eco cycle, which in the long run will save us quite a bit of money on electricity. We are coming here to the end and we are going to have a look to the 5% of electricity consumption that can be attributed to other appliances and devices at home. Here we want to bring your attention to the standby power consumption and how the devices and appliances in standby mode may be consuming and wasting electricity without you to know about it. On a screen we are showing a screenshot of our TV sound system and how it was configured to stay in standby mode for up to 2 hours while not in use. This means that if we forgot to switch it off, the sound system remained using power for up to 2 hours. And this was a waste. And there are other examples, like our TV, which was set up for a long auto power of period and had not the echo function enabled. Or our laptops, which may remain for long periods power on unless we adjust the auto power off to a shorter period. Or our printers, which they also have an auto power off setting that needs to be enabled. If you have a printer at home, have a look to the power settings and make sure that the auto power off mode it is enabled. Otherwise, your printer will remain using electricity, which may not seem so much, but it can quickly add up over time. If you have your printer all the time on a standby mode and if you want to know how much electricity it is consuming while not in use, use again the plug-in power meter to find out the power consumption and cost. If you are not sure what a watt, kilowatt or kilowatt hour is, we have left a link on the video description to a post where we explain them all. And this is the end. Not to make this video too long, we have provided just some ideas for saving electricity but we have many others available in our website. If you found this content useful, please give us a like. Also, you can consider to subscribe to our channel so you can receive notifications every time we upload new content. Thanks for watching and hope to have you back for another visit.